Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Pranov 23 in the five minute pool in ICC. He plays c4, let's play c6, and then d5. White can play this line where they um, do not put the pawn on d4 for a while, if ever. It looks like that's what he's going for. Oh, okay, just as I say that, he transposes back into normal waters. So now we're in a mainline anti Moran. Plays b3. I'll just castle against that. Black can play e5 here and try to break in the center. It's actually kind of tempting to do that. Let's let's try that line. Sometimes it leads to like um, IQP positions where black doesn't have a lot of play. But theoretically, this is supposed to be a pretty good way of playing for black. So we'll try it. Now, if bishop e2, I can go knight takes f3, followed by d4. So he may not allow that. And you notice the big rating differential. I had to wait a long time for this game. Uh, rook d1. So can I put pressure on this knight, like queen a5 or queen c7? Might be easy-ish for him to dissipate that pressure. Let's go here, though, because it looks annoying. Hitting h2, and I'm x-raying the queen on c2. So maybe I can quickly like play bishop g4, gain a tempo against his rook, and then play rook a c8, maybe. And also just the threat on the h2 pawn is irritating for him. Possibly I can get him to overreact and play a move like f4. Might be an idea. He plays bishop d3. That could be smart. But okay, now I'm thinking just bishop g4. I don't want to take on h2. That'd be kind of foolish to take this pawn, especially before he's castled. Yeah, let's just do this. If f3, I can play the bishop back to e6 or play bishop h5 and maybe try to go to g6. Hmm. Both ways are tempting. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, let's do bishop e6. Might be a little safer that way. If bishop h5, I was kind of wondering if he could play g4, bishop g6, and then g5. Trying to kick away the knight so as to play knight takes d5. Not sure that would work with uh, the bishops opposing each other, actually, but I didn't want to spend time thinking about it. Okay, he plays f4, so this is the move that I said he might be forced to play eventually. Okay, we'll drop that back. He can castle now, though. He has a extremely weak pawn on e3. Let's, let's put our rook on c8 and x-ray his queen. He probably needs to flee with that queen, like queen e2, maybe. Ah, but that runs into bishop g4. <laughs> Just as I said that. Bishop g4, can he take on d5? Knight takes, queen takes. He's hitting g7. Bishop g4, knight takes d5, bishop takes e2. That's got to be good for us. Let's do it. Knight takes d5, bishop takes e2, knight takes c7. We can take one of the rooks, and then the knight will be hanging after that. Okay, he just resigned. Hmm. Didn't want to play down the exchange. Okay, quick game. Um, but I think this game shows like the method that black can use to try to equalize uh, against this b3 anti-Moran. So c4, c6, this is my usual move against c4. He plays knight f3, and then d5. And c c6 is a good move for Slav players, Slav and semi-Slav players, because you can often expect transpositions back into one of those one of those openings when White plays d4, e3. So he guards the pawn. G3 is an alternative way to play. So e3, knight f6, knight c3, e6, queen c2, knight bd7. So if White wanted to persist in uh, not putting the pawn on d4, they have a couple ways to do that. B3 is common, just preparing to fan cat with a bishop. And oftentimes I see, uh, I can't remember if it's before B3 or after, I think it's usually after, but after like say B3, bishop D6, bishop B2, castles. Here white can play bishop E2 or rook G1 even. Rook G1 is interesting. Preparing G4, G5 and looking for an attack. White will try to whisk their king away to the queen side at an opportune moment. So here, though, d4 is played, and then bishop d6. So the anti-Moran is when white puts the queen on c2. So bishop d6, 
b3, castles, bishop b2. So I played this position before where I just go like b6, followed by bishop b7, and slowly try to prepare c5. Black's a bit worse than that line. It is possible to play that way, um, but it's a bit passive. Now, e5, though, I run the risk of ending up in an IQP position, which most players like playing against the IQP. There's not too many people who like playing with the IQP, the isolated queen spawn. But black is ahead in development, so e5 makes perfect sense. And actually, I remember talking to uh, Wesley So, the Super Grandmaster, after we had played a game in uh, the anti-Moran a couple years ago, and he told me that he thought e5 is the best move in this position, trying to break in the center. So he seemed to be of the opinion that black can play that way successfully. So c takes d5, c takes d5, d takes e5, knight takes. So I remember a game, it's a Korchnoi game. Uh, I think it's Korchnoi versus Belyovsky. Korchnoi was white, where he played bishop e2, and then after knight check. takes f3, check, bishop takes f3, Belyovsky played d4. And this gave black great play. And if you're operating with the isolated queen's pawn, this is always an advance that you want to be thinking about. Trying to offload the pawn, but get play for it. And... After um, e takes d4, ironically, I think knight e4 is the best move, not taking a pawn. But after e takes d4, rook e8 check, check Korchnoi got in all sorts of troubles. I'm trying to remember which way he blocked the check. I think, hmm, I'm actually not sure about that. I think he blocked with the bishop, but I'm not positive. Or did he move the king even? I mean, king f1 is... All, I think it might have been king f1, now that I think about it. And then I went queen a5, and black has ideas of bishop f5. Yeah, I think it was king f1. But nevertheless, black gets good compensation. Like in the event of bishop e2, I think one possible line is uh, queen c7. Same move as I did in the game. I in the h2 pawn and also uh, setting up this pin of the knight on c3. And then white has to figure out what to do about that. And if they play g3... Well, that's great because like a move like bishop h3 will keep white's king in the middle. And if h3, then that side of the board has been weakened slightly. Um, I think there's also bishop g4. Bishop g4 is possible here too. Although maybe then white can castle. But nevertheless, I was prepared to do that. Um, play d4 and offload the pawn if the opportunity arose. But he took on e5. Let's start up the engine right about here. I took with the bishop. Rook d1, and now queen c7. So it's probably just the case that he can't really afford to uh, play this rook d1 move. He needs to get castled. He needs to play his light square bishop out and, and start getting his king to safety. But um, I went queen c7. Yeah, bishop g4 even here makes sense. Queen c7, he played bishop d3, bishop g4, f3. And here I debated a little bit about which bishop move to make, bishop h5 or bishop e6. On this one, I wasn't quite sure whether g4, bishop g6, and then g5 would be any good for him. Idea being to uh, try to divert the knight from guarding this d5 point, so taking. But I think that just shouldn't work tactically because of the hanging bishop. Yeah, even if white like, check. inserts a check and then, like, I don't know, takes check. here for some reason, <laughs> it's not going to matter because he's got to take a timeout to recapture and then I win that bishop. So it does seem like bishop h5 would be tactically justified. And bishop h5, a nice benefit of that is that on f4, I can just take on d1, so f4 is not really possible for him. But I played bishop e6, and still white has trouble because we we are threatening bishop takes h2 all the time. Especially now. Uh, now if I get a free moment, I might do it even before white has castled because my bishop can escape to g3 so easily. There's no pawn on f2. So he played f4, I went bishop d6, he castled. Rook c8. Yeah, now he played a pretty natural move to try to escape the c-file pressure, but it just so happened that it ran into bishop g4. What would have been better? Queen f2 would have been better. Now the dream scenario for white is if they can, I think, get their knight or their bishop to the d4 square. Like play knight b5 and try to sink it in here. Or bishop d4 in order to reinforce that pawn. And maybe they can succeed in doing that after queen f2. I'm a little surprised the advantage is that much for white. Now it's changing a little bit, maybe. But um, yeah, with queen f2, they sidestep the bishop g4 threat. And maybe the weakness of e3 is not so significant. It's possible that d5 will be a bigger weakness in the end. 
F4 is kind of nice in that it gains space, and I have to watch out for F5 a lot. So how could I have played this better? Maybe just bishop c5 or queen b6 right away, not bother with rook a c8. Strike while the iron is hot and attack e3 straight away. Because that way, if if uh, queen f2 now, then knight g4 is possible, forking. And if queen e2, same thing as in the game, bishop g4. So maybe that would have been a little savvier. Likewise, bishop c5. Hmm. But he blundered queen e2 and then bishop g4. I would have played on here if I were white. Because it's not immediately winning for me or anything. And maybe he will have a chance to stabilize the position if he can get knight b5 to d4 in. In fact, I wonder if he can do that right here. Yeah, he can insert knight b5 before recapturing on d1. So like queen e7. Yeah, he could even take the bishop if he wants. But let's just say hypothetically, like, take here. Okay, well, that might be bad in view of knight g4. But knight takes d6, queen takes d6, rook takes d1. Yeah, white's got two bishops on good diagonals, at least for the moment. Minus 1.6 is not, not a win, certainly not in blitz. So, okay, so to semi-slob semi -slob players, I could recommend this approach with e5 if you have trouble against these anti-Moran and these Fianchetto lines. Um, and it's good to know that you do have opportunities to offload the d-pawn with counterplay uh, early on. Not always, but uh, it sometimes does work that way. Yeah, and here I think white should probably play bishop e2 instead of uh, taking on e5. I wish I remembered the theory a bit more specifically, but um, it's possible for white to try to stabilize the situation and castle and play against that IQP, but like if we just follow the computer line, knight takes e5, bishop takes, so I guess the computer thinks this is okay. I mean, here black could just play d4 if we want. Maybe black can get in d4 in almost any case in this line. Hmm. It's worth investigating. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll be back tomorrow with another Blitz video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.